One of the big terms that we like to talk about when we're looking at soils and fertility is balance. And balance is one of those things that, oh, what does it really mean? Well, when you look at base saturation, we're looking at the binding sites on that soil and what nutrients are being held there. And knowing the balance of that is pretty important. When you look at some key nutrients like magnesium and calcium, potassium, and then hydrogen and sodium as well. You can see these positively charged nutrients that are tied up on the negatively charged soil particles. So very often when we talk about soils here at Ag PhD, we talk about two things. Number one is the amount of nutrients, and number two is the balance of nutrients in your soil. So the amount of nutrients, that's relatively easy to figure. We say, okay, you need 200 pounds. You go, all right, I throw 200 pounds out there, piece of cake. But when it comes to balance, you're probably saying, um, that sounds super crazy complicated. How am I supposed to balance nutrients in my soil? Well, using this base saturation test is one of the ways you can balance nutrients in your soil. So we have certain kind of ranges that we would really like to see your soil in to have an ideal situation for good crop growth. All right, let's get into those numbers that Brian was talking about. The first one I wanna start with is calcium because that's the one you want the most of in your soil. It's a very, very important nutrient. And I, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, we haven't talked about N, P, and K. No, no, we're gonna start with calcium. We need to have at least 65% calcium in your soil and no more than 80%. So we want it somewhere in that range. And if we've got that to start with, now the other nutrients all start to fall in place. With magnesium, depending on how heavy or light your soil is, uh, and this one is a little bit complicated, we want to see at least 12% magnesium, probably not more than 18 or 20%. Now if we're in a really light soil, we want to be towards the higher end of that range, and if we're in a heavy soil, we want to be towards the lower end. All right, then we drop down to the last three nutrients. You don't need near as many of these in your soil. Let's talk about one that you could be almost at zero, that's hydrogen. When your hydrogen hits zero, that means that your soil pH is seven or above. So for most crops, we're looking at 6.3 to 6.8 pH is ideal. So you should find your hydrogen in the range of about 2% to 10% if you are in that pH range of 6.3 to 6.8. Remember that anything below seven, that's an acid soil, that just means you have hydrogen in it. So if you see a very high hydrogen number, let's say it's 20%, well that tells you that your pH is too low for most crops. Now that's not all crops. Okay, so let's say you want to raise blueberries and 5.5 is the ideal pH. Well, then you're probably going to want more hydrogen in your soil because you want that pH down. Anyway, the last two would be sodium. You want that number less than 1%. If you have high sodium levels, that can cause major problems in your, on your farm, in your soil, in your crop. You've got to keep your sodium levels down. Usually good drainage takes care of that. And then finally, potassium. We really want to see 4% to 8% base saturation K. Many times we're looking at parts per million on a soil test, and here's where this balance thing comes into play. If you've got a really heavy soil, it's going to take a lot of parts per million in order to get some into your plant. And you say, what? How does that work? If I have 300 parts per million in a heavy soil versus a light soil, shouldn't it be about the same thing? No, because in that lighter soil, you have a lot less parts per million of calcium and magnesium and all those other things. So it's easier for your plants to find that potassium and get it into your plant. When you've got a heavy soil, generally you've got a huge amount of parts per million of calcium, magnesium, some of these other things, and it's hard to find that potassium. So we need a little bit higher uh, parts per million number in those heavy soils. That's why we look at this base saturation, because it tells us, okay, in relation to everything else, where are we at? Well, once again, the base saturation test on a soil test is incredibly important information to have. So we just really encourage you, wherever you get your soil testing done, make sure you request that a base saturation test gets done as well. Again, that's the measurement of five different nutrients against each other. It's just a percentage. The percentage should always add up to 100%. You're looking at calcium, magnesium, hydrogen, sodium, and potassium. Getting soil fertility improved can really help you get an excellent crop canopy, which can hold out our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what else will stop it coming up next. <music>